to show you this relatively simple method that I'm using to develop my portrait skills, which is rendering portraits with only two marker colors. I've been doing monochromatic portraits with gouache paint to practice facial anatomy and learn more about value. So I was excited to try approaching monochromatic portraits with alcohol markers, and I'll be showing you the different steps to creating these portraits. For materials, I'm using Strathmore marker paper, two Ohuhu markers, and you can pick the colors you like for this, but essentially you want one darker value marker and another color from the same family, but that is lighter in value and that you can layer to get slightly darker values, as you can see here with the pink. I also used a color pencil for the outlines that was the same-ish color to the darker marker, a pencil for my initial sketches and some erasers. I'll link the exact supplies I'm using below. And before we get started, I just want to say a huge thanks to Ohuhu for sponsoring this video. And I'm also really excited to show you that Ohuhu markers are now refillable. They sent me these refills which are amazing because you can refill your markers when they run out. This one 16 milliliter refill pen can fill up an Ohuhu marker from three to eight times depending on which set of markers you have. They come with these screw on caps and you can refill them two different ways. The first is to remove the nib with a tweezer and drop the ink into the body of the pen and the second way is by dropping ink onto the nib directly. It comes with clear instructions for you to follow so it's pretty simple and for $4.99 I think it's a good price for being able to refill your markers multiple times. They come as single packs so you can specifically order the colors you need and they have 51 different colors to choose from. So thanks so much Ohuhu for sponsoring and let's get back into the portraits. So with gouache paint, I'm able to push and pull the paint to form my faces. So I feel like I don't have to get everything perfect initially because I can build and shape with the paint. But with this approach with markers, it was a bit different. There are many ways to draw portraits with markers, but I guess what I was drawn to more was a cleaner and more defined look versus a more sketchy style in this moment. So the pros of this is that it's quite quick and simple to render, but the flip side to this is that you really need to spend some time getting that initial sketch right so that your overall proportions and facial anatomy look good once you start laying down the markers. So this exercise really helped me warm up those drawing skills. I started with sketching the face roughly with a pencil and I loosely used the Loomis method to build out the face and I say loosely because there are more steps to it and so I generally use it as a starting point and it ha helps me to get the general proportions of the face right. I'll link a video I used years ago to help me get better at the Loomis method. Then with a colour pencil, I did some very simple outlines over the pencil sketch and I kept these really simple, so not sketchy. As I said, I was feeling drawn to that simple line look in the moment, so this is stylistic, but I think it goes really well with the style of the marker renderings that I did. So I start with a lighter colour marker and I'm essentially observing my reference photo and dividing the face into three different values. And just so that we're on the same page, value refers to how light or how dark a color is. The lightest value is gonna be represented by the white of the page. So that's your most illuminated parts on the face, the highlights. The midtone value is gonna be my light color marker and the darker values, so the shadow, the hair, the eyes, are gonna be my darker color. Now, obviously the face has a way wider value range than just three colors, but the beauty of doing these marker studies is that you can train your eye to simplify the values of the face, which is a really good skill to have. And it also leaves you with that really cool, simplified monochromatic look. So I'm laying down my lighter marker, following the shape of the midtone shadows I picked out. And I like to see the face as shapes connected to each other rather than looking at it as a face, if that makes sense. So for example, I look at the shape of the highlight that the cheek or the nose is making and I mark out the shape rather than thinking of it as a facial feature. Um, and it may be psychological, but it helps to really see how all these different shapes relate to each other and will make the portrait more accurate that way. I also go in and layer the marker again to deepen some of the areas such as the frown lines and this helps with depth. 
I then go in with the darker marker and I do the exact same thing where I've picked out all the deeper shadows of the face and I find it can be easy to go overboard with the darker marker. It can be really tempting to think that every deep shadow on the face should be immediately drawn in that dark colour but I find the portrait looks best if you really reserve the dark colour marker for the very deepest values and try not to exaggerate this because otherwise the portrait can feel really disjointed as there's a big jump between the light colour marker and the dark colour marker. I also use a white gel pen to add some of those smaller highlighted areas, which I forgot to mention at the beginning. Here I'm going in with another layer of marker to add a bit more depth to some of the bone structure of the face, as well as texture to the hair. Picking a good reference photo can be crucial when you first start out because it can really help you see very well where the biggest highlights and the shadows of the face are especially if you pick a high contrast photo where maybe the sun is hitting the face of the person. But you can do this method with any portrait, it doesn't have to be a high contrast photo. For example, with this second face, it was a bit harder to see where the light and shadow contrast was as it was a bit more subtle due to the lighting. It was harder to see the edge of the shadow and the light. What helps is to step far back from the photo and kind of half shut your eyes and you'll be able to see the shape of the shadows more. And I'm linking all the reference photos that I used from Pinterest below, by the way, in case you want to try out any of these exact portraits. But if you're just starting out, I would also recommend looking for black and white portraits because this will help you simplify the values. So I started drawing this face way too small and so I had to redo it and looking back at this footage I was reminded that sometimes when I approach new things I do so tentatively if I feel like I'm not too sure of myself in the moment but this is a reminder to take up the whole page when you try new things and do it with confidence even if it doesn't turn out the way you want it to initially. That feeling of being bold and just going for it is gonna positively influence your outcome it's just a little reminder for myself mainly. <laughs> So for this third portrait, I picked a photo of a girl with more contrast of sunlight and shadow on her face, which made it really easy to pick out where the highlights and the shadows were. I used a slightly different colour combination, which initially threw me a bit because the value contrast between the lighter mint green and the darker green wasn't as stark as the previous colour combinations that I had used, but I ended up liking the effect it had.
I layered the lighter green a lot to create depth in areas that were slightly darker. And I also used the color pencil a lot more to create more value range in the darker areas. It was in this portrait where I saw that using the colour pencil was going to add to the portraits in general by being able to add softness and some colour gradients that would enhance the faces, um, like still keeping to that more graphic look but adding a bit more depth. So in this next portrait, I took those lessons and applied them and I ended up liking this portrait the most. At this point I was feeling more confident and comfortable and I always say that I can tangibly see my feelings in my art, like the feeling of enjoyment and confidence definitely affects the final result. Something different that I also did in this portrait was render the shadows in straighter lines. Like I didn't curve the shadows as much as I did in my other portraits. Like in the blue one for example, you can see a lot more curvature. And I think stylistically this works really well for the monochrome marker portraits. I also really loved the colour combination I did for this portrait. I love pink and red together. I find them so aesthetically pleasing. So with the colour pencil, I was able to add a lot of the detail and I just can't help myself when it comes to details. I love adding tiny details to things. And I was also able to add some of that softness into the features with the pencil by doing some light shading.
the white gel pen is super useful because you can't erase the marker obviously but in this case where I kind of lost the shape of her face I was able to add white gel pen to get the shape back I then went back and I did some touching up of the other portraits with the pencil to add some softness to the lines and overall I was really happy with how they came out and I can't wait to do some more of these portraits especially with the pink and red combination. Let me know if you have any questions and hopefully this was useful for you in some way and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!